Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Who wouldn't serve a God so great as our God? The God that we serve The true and the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We just bless him today for everything that he has done and everything that he's doing in this hour. It's time now for us to draw nigh unto God with all of our hearts. With all of our mind, soul, and strength. The God that we serve is a holy God. The God that we serve is a holy God. And everything else is unacceptable. In his sight. So we bless God for just being good and being long suffering unto us, being good to us when it, when we didn't even deserve it. But we thank God for his grace, his mercy, and his long suffering. So we are grateful to be in this place today to give unto God the glory that's due unto his name. That we can hear something good from the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the 96 numbers of Psalms, and I want to begin reading at the fourth verse. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, little g. For all the gods of the nation are idle, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory. Do unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear him, all ye earth. You can be seated. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And we want to talk a little bit about that life of holiness today because this is a life that we should love to live. Because God said it's beautiful. In the beauty of holiness. So we want to be found worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. That the lifestyle that we live is a lifestyle that's going to give glory 
unto his name. And so we're living in the last days and the coming of the Lord is at hand. And only, only those that are prepared, are ready, are going back with him when he comes. And so we need to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls to, to serve him with every ounce of our being. Jesus Christ is on his way back. And I can assure you that he's not going to make any mistakes. But this lifestyle of holiness is a lifestyle that people think that you c it cannot be lived. A lifestyle that's pleasing and acceptable in the eyesight of God. The lifestyle of holiness. Life, holiness is a lifestyle of separation. Holiness is a lifestyle of separation. When Jesus in St. John 17 talked about his disciples, he said they're in the world but they're not of the world. And so, in other words, there's a separation. We don't walk like, talk like, dress like, act like, live like the world. It's a life of total distinction. You can't, you can't misrepresent a life of holiness. You, you can't get it mixed up with, with, with just being religious. But holiness is a lifestyle that sets us apart from everybody else. Now, this, this is what let everybody else know that we, we've been changed. It's not because we go to church. It's a lifestyle of separation. Glory to his name. And so we bless God. We magnify him. Glory to his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's messed up. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so it's, it's a lifestyle that nobody going to get you mixed up with everybody else. God intended for us to be different. He told us to put a difference between clean and unclean, put a difference between holy and unholy. So holiness is a lifestyle. It, it's not about just going to church. It's, it's not about being like everybody else. The lifestyle of holiness, the, the reason they got Baptists on the door because there's a bad lifestyle that catered to ba baptism. The reason they got Methodism on the door is because it's a lifestyle that catered to Methodism. But when you start talking about holy and sanctified, that then folks start looking funny because they know it's a lifestyle that you cannot be like everybody else. And God never intended for his people to be like everybody else. And so when we make up our mind that we're going to serve him, we sign on to be different. Now, in America, we got different branches of the military. You got the Air Force, you got the Army, you got the Navy, you got the Marines, you got the Coast Guard. But every one of them has a uniform of distinction. You don't get the Air Force mixed up with the Navy. You don't get the Marine mixed up with the Army. All of these are, they, they, they are different. And so, basically, they, they, they fight to, to protect our liberty, civil liberties, 
and maintain peace in America. But the uniforms are different. Now, when God called us out of darkness into the marvelous light, he made us to be different. Come on and talk back to me. And so now we, we, we got to get excited about living holy. We got to worship God in the beauty of holiness. God never intended for holiness to be a lifestyle being downtrodden and disappointed, uh, all mixed up and messed up. Man, you, you, there's nobody that's living holy contemplates suicide. That, that you, you trying to, you, you, your life is so messed up, you, you're not even saved. Because when you got God, you got the peace of God. And the peace of God passes all understanding. And so I, I don't care what trial, I don't care what test come, we, we're praying to God, God, help me to get through this. I'm not going to change. I'm going to stand fast in the liberty where with Christ has set me free, but I'm going to stand fast in holiness. I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm looking at the one that brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Bless his holy name. So y'all just, just bear with me. Bless his holy name. And so God is trying to bring his people into a place of acceptance, accept what God desires for our lives. Now, there's a thing that, that we're facing now that's called cultural holiness. Now, let, let, me, let me explain that. So, people are adapting to what everybody else is doing. The other so-called holiness churches, whatever they do, the other churches are following suit. But the real holiness church is standing fast in the liberty where we Christ has set them free. God's word is not going to change for nothing and nobody. And therefore, I have made up my mind. Do, do me a favor, El Hunter. Read that on the wall. You, you can walk up there. TGAC, Oath of Commitment. Since God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. Come on, read it. Our manual, this is where we get our instruction from. We're not getting it from cultural holiness. We're not allowing the churches or the church world to dictate unto us how we should live, how we should dress, how we should walk, how we should talk. We are looking unto the word of God. Why are you looking to the word of God? Because all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's God breathed. It's God inspired. It's not something that man wrote. It's not something that somebody concocted. We are talking about what God's word says. Read it. God's word is forever. Settled in the heavens. It has not changed. And so what, what about God's word? God's word is his standard. God's word is his standard. Come on. Now, we, we got the priestess to every creature, going to all the world and preach the gospel. This word that has not been tampered with, this word that has not been added to, we are not talking about these old, old funny Bibles. I don't want a T.D. Jake Bible. I don't want all these other preachers' Bible. John wants the Jimmy Swagger Bible because it ain't work for him. 
So if it ain't work for him, it ain't gonna work for me and nobody else. So just give me the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about the Bible that these preachers have written. Man, that's a spirit of pride and arrogance. I recall years ago listening to a documentary, documentary about God's secretary. These are those that translated God's word that uh, uh, King James had these scribes to translate God's word from Latin, Hebrew, unto English. He didn't go there and they, they changed nothing. All he did is just translate it. it just like you, you, you talking about unos, then you, that, that's one in Spanish, I say one in English. It, it, it didn't change nothing. It didn't change the value of the word. It didn't make it more or less. It was the same thing. And so everything what he changed, my God, from the original Hebrew or Greek or Latin, it was the same thing we translated to English. And so we're going to stay with the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Because only God's word is going to make us holy. Only God's word is going to keep us holy. Read. The message does not change. See, when you go along with cultural holiness, they constantly change Pentecostal churches done changed. Apostolic churches done changed. The so-called church of God in Christ, church supposed to be in Christ, it done changed. The, the, the church, the four square church, it done changed. You, you talking about the church of the Nazareth, it done changed. You talking about all the, the assembly of God, Back in the day, these folks had holiness. But now everything go on in the church. Let me tell you something. All these, these hypocritical, evangelical, all they, they, they talk about, you don't say what God's word said. If you was a Christian, God's word, you're talking, we got, we got values. And the only values you devils got you against gays and you against abortion. And you're going ahead, going to hell for that because you say God hate gays. God ain't never hated gays. He ain't never hated abortion. He never hated those that, that have a have aborted a child. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so let me. Let, Give me 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Just, just say right there. Huh? Somebody give me 1 Corinthians 6. Start at verse 9. Know you not? No, you not or in other words, don't you know? Read. Don't you know that those that are not doing right, are not going to heaven. Now, wait, let, 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 me, let me deal with something right there. Except our righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, we're going to hell. Our righteousness got to exceed that. Living holy, transcend, just going to church. Come on, read. Hold it right there. If the white evangelicals, if y'all had values, this don't even mention abortion. This don't even mention abortion. But he said, but he said fornicators, and you got all of these, these politicians, all of these preachers fornicating. But you, ain't, you don't consider that a, a, a family value. You hypocrites going to hell. From, from I don't care if it's from Billy Graham to or, or, or Jeffries, all of you devils going to hell. Don't care if you don't ever like 
Because all of them coming out trying to defend that, that mobster, that, that dictator, Donald Trump. You devils, you know y'all going to hell. Why you say that? This did not Jesus. And don't care if you don't ever like it. You, you ain't cared nothing. Every time Donald Trump, whatever he said, man, you got peaceful marchers. Then Donald Trump talking about these mobsters. Then the next thing you know, coming out of these so-called Baptist preachers now, mobsters. These are the people, peaceful protesters. And then you call calling them mobsters because you following the devil. I, I want all of you devils to know all you devils going to hell. Every one of you. Come on, read. No, adults, his fornicators are not going. Those that having sex out of wedlock. And y'all embrace the fornicator. Y'all embrace the adulterer. Well, Donald Trump was all of it. And y'all embrace that. What, what, the, what about family values? Man, it's these type of uh, uh, sins that destroy family value. It's destroy the, fam the, the fiber of the family. But you ain't, you're not for that. You're for everything that's wrong. Because if you're right now supporting him, only devil trying to take up, take up for him. I don't care if you don't ever like it. How come I ain't never seen you devil? You, you got black, some of you devils got black members. And you ain't stood up for Black Lives Matter. You ain't said it's all, you you ain't say it's wrong for for white supremacy because you devils are prejudiced. Yep. Yep. I don't I don't care if you got on suit and a tie. You devils prejudiced, yep. and you gonna die and you gonna go to hell because you got to stand before God for this sin that's in your life. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That, that mentioned more than, than homosexuals and, and, and abortion. How come y'all ain't against that? You devil's going to hell. I don't care if I'm the only voice that's saying that. You devil's going to hell. God, and, and, and you, 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 you black church members that's sitting up in there, man, like a bunch of blackbirds, you ought to get up out of there. Get away from the slave master. Boy, don't thank God for this tie. Thank God for this tie. I, I almost got loose right there. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, hold up. That, that's good. Because <laughs> you're going to preach, we got to preach whole council. Listen, <clears throat> just coming out of my office, and I was just looking at one of the, the books that, that I had received, and someone had written in the book. And it, 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 they were telling them that. So if you want to be popular, preach happiness. But if you want to be unpopular, preach holiness. In other words, you just preach that which is right. You don't have you to worry about being popular. And let me tell you something. This life of holiness, man, you ought to wear, wear, wear like a badge of honor. Don't let these devil try. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. A preacher was talking about in, in the church. See, they don't want to deal with dress. It's all in your heart. A preacher was a uh, uh, preacher was saying that they went to a, there was a church where they're having a baptism, a christening, and they were taking the baby up there so that the preacher could pray for him. And say the young lady and her husband walked up to going up to the before the pastor and said it was a disgrace what she had on. That the dress was almost up to a hill. It, 
it's a disgrace what these folks are wearing in these churches. Everything is hanging out. Everything is exposed. And the Bible asks a profound question. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? When you not dress right and you commit an abomination, when all of your, your hind is out. Folks, are all in the pulpit today, You in, in this day and time, every time there's a bunch of women sitting up there, my God, what a conscience crawl because the, the dress is too short. Because if they sit up there without that conscience crawl, the gates of hell are going to be open. You're going to see all they on the way with their nasty self. How come that ain't one of your values? Cover your tail up. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? The Bible said, oh no. Neither did they could they blush. There, there's no shame in their game. But this is why we're going to preach and teach the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, you don't have a whole lot of folks that's preaching and teaching and living holy. But somewhere in there, John the Revelator said, I saw a number that no man can number. He said, I saw 144,000 coming out of the 12 tribes of Israel. 12 tribes, 12,000 coming out of each tribe. And so, but he said, I saw another number coming out of every nation, every kindred, every tongue, and every tribe that no man can number. So we, 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 there's a whole lot of us living holy. We might be scattered all over the place, but there's a whole lot of us living holy. And this is why the real holiness churches, my God, need to get together so we can support and encourage and build up one another. Hello up in here, somebody. All of this foolishness, foolishness that's going on in the church world. All of this mess that's going on in the church. I remember John Hagen, they, they looking at it as a game. Talking about we going to bring back slavery. Then he has a backlash behind it, then he changed it. Man, you know, they talking about what they were saying, we, we going to have people in as a fundraiser, we going to use people are going to go out and offer their services. And you're paying. And so they thought, we're going to bring back slavery. That, that, that you're not showing any sympathy or empathy to those black, ignorant folks sitting up in your congregation. Slavery is a sensitive matter. These folks, these are not, you know why they were called slaves? Because they came here against their will. But nobody want to say nothing about it. I ain't trying to be a friend or none of you, devil. I'm, my job is to expose you for the crooks and the hypocrites that you are. All right, come on. Hold on. <clears throat> Sanctified means to be set apart. Holiness is a life of separation. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And this is why we tell you, sister, you got to cover your tail up. You can't be walking around in with holes closed on. Bishop, you, you said holes closed. That's what, exactly what I said. I, 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 I didn't say that pretty word, whores. See, when I say holes, that, that, that's a common vernacular in the hip-hop world. But you say whores, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know nothing about that. They think you're talking about a water hose. But you just make it plain. And so this is why we tell you, you can't wear that junk that exposed in your tutu. And you shouldn't have no problem conforming to holy standards. When you love God, you don't have any problem in conforming to what God...